I'm Stuart Jones from Laserchrome. I want to talk about high back pressure in a liquid chromatograph. The HPLC will generate very high back pressure, much higher back pressure than we'll encounter in everyday life. The pressure is caused by the pump forcing the mobile phase, the eluent, through the column. And so the high back pressure occurs in the system between the pump and the top of the column. The actual back pressure is not something which we set, it just happens. And it's a function of the particle size in the column, the diameter of the tubing, the length of the column, the viscosity of the mobile phase and the temperature that we're running the system at. The back pressure is measured in different units depending on the different HPLC systems. So sometimes it will be in pounds per square inch. Usually American systems use this. It could be in bars and most European systems use that. It could be in megapascals and a megapascal is 10 bars. The magic number for converting is 15 and so 15 psi makes a bar and 150 psi therefore makes a megapascal. We need to be careful with this because of setting the maximum and minimum pressure cutouts. Obviously if the system works up to 6,000 bars but you're used to working in megapascals, if you set the maximum pressure cutout to 40, that would be the same as 6,000 psi, but the system will cut out very quickly. What would be a normal pressure is something that you would have to determine for your system. There is no accurate or right answer. But it's important that you set an appropriate upper limit that will stop the system if the pressure goes too high. The actual pressure then could be the inc or could give us an incorrect answer if we find that something has gone wrong. So if we got a, a, a change, maybe normally it's 200 bars and the next day we come in and it's 300 bars, this is telling us something and we need to be able to act accordingly. If the pressure is normally 200 bars and it's now 300 bars, it may be the column heater's not on, so that the viscosity is higher. It may be we've got a wrong column, maybe too small a particle size, maybe too long a column, there may be a blockage in the column, and it may be we've made up the completely the wrong mobile phase, maybe it's just water without acetonitrile. If the pressure is too low, then it could be there's a leak, from somewhere and the places we would look would be between the pump and the top of the column, the inlet of the column. It could be there's a leak, but it could also be that we're just using acetonite trial with no water in at all, or it could be that we have too short a column or too large a particle size, etc. It may be that the temperature has been set too high. So these temperature changes and therefore pressure changes give us an indication that something's wrong. Now, the question is, if one day we come in and the back pressure is 300 bars and we're expecting 200 bars, how do we know if, for example, it is the column that is faulty? Let's say we've tested and we're sure that we have the right mobile phase and the right column, but we now have 300 bars and not 200 bars. The first thing to check would be to disconnect the tubing from the bottom of the column. We're not expecting any change in the pressure because there should be no pressure through the tubing and into the detector and out to waste. There's no resistance to flow. But we should disconnect it and then test to see. Now, if we then disconnect the tubing from the top of the column, the, the, we are going to lose 200 bars because that is the normal back pressure from the column. So if the pressure now goes to zero, the problem that we had that caused the extra 100 bars must be in the column. If, on the other hand, the pressure remains at about 100 bars, then something else is blocking up. We should then be looking at the tubing from the column to the injection valve. We could take that off and test. We could very easily test to see if it is the loop by turning the valve from load to inject. If we're in the inject position, the loop is included in the flow path and therefore the back pressure. If we are in the load position, then the loop is excluded. It, if we disconnect the tube from, that goes from the pump to the injection valve from the valve, that now takes the valve in its entirety out of the flow path, and normally that would reduce the pressure to zero. 
If it doesn't, then the blockage is in the, the tube from the column to the injection valve. If a piece of tubing is blocked, you may be able to clear it by putting it on backwards so that the end that normally connects into the valve, for example, could be put into the pump and then just turn the pump on. The pressure will build up, it will build up quite fast and maybe it will spit out the blockage. The blockage will have gone down the tube about as far as it can go and then got stuck. So it's not going to be cleared by just pumping harder in the same direction. It will have blocked the tube on the inlet end and the blockage will not have gone very far. So if necessary, if the tube is long enough, you could cut off that little inlet end and then make up a new piece of tubing or just put up a new ferrule on the end. Now, if the blockage was in the column, so that when we took off the column, that meant the back pressure went down to zero, it's possible that it's the frit. We, this is the normal size for a column, although it might be 15 centimetres or 10 centimetres. But I'll use a larger column to show you because it's easier to see. <clears throat> so if we take the end off the column, this is the end fitting. This is the nut that holds the end fitting on. So we keep this piece still and turn the nut. And at that point, this end fitting will come off the column and a frit falls out. The frit is a filter disc, which filters the mobile phase coming into the column and the sample. <clears throat> if that frit is blocked, then we will get very high back pressure. Now, looking through the end of the column, you'll probably find this easy to do on your own one rather than this one. There is a very tiny capillary that goes from where the connecting tubing goes in through to the inside of the column. All of the sample and the mobile phase comes through that tiny capillary and straight into the middle of the frit and it blocks up at a point in the middle. So if we were to turn the column upside down, I'm just putting it back together. If we were to turn the column upside down and pump in the reverse direction, if that frit was blocked up right in the middle, the mobile phase now doesn't come out of a point source, but it comes out of the full diameter of the column. And so it goes through the whole of the frit and can then run around behind the blockage and out through the, at the port at the other end. As a consequence, the back pressure in the reverse direction will be normal. So if the peak shape is normal so that we're not destroying anything and we reverse the direction of the column and the back pressure goes back to normal, that means that the inlet frit is blocked. If the back pressure drops a little and then goes back to 300 bars, or whatever it was, then we still have a problem. And it suggests that the packing bed itself is blocked. It could be blocked by dust from the mobile phase bottle, bacteria, um, undissolved buffer salts, all kinds of things. Generally speaking, if the column's blocked, it's blocked, we have to throw it away. The only thing else is that it might be that something has chemically bonded onto the top of the column. And in which case, by reversing the column and pumping with a strong eluent in the backwards direction, the reverse direction, we may be able to wash it off. If something is sticking like glue to the top of the column, we could pump in the forwards direction for ages and we may have simply moved it from here to here. But if we pump backwards, then it's either on the column still or it's washed off. Changing a frit is quite straightforward, but you must have a spare frit and it must be the right type. Most frits are 2 micron, unless you're using a UPLC column with very small particle sizes. It is very important that the frit is smaller in its pore size than the particle size inside the column. The inlet frit is there to protect the, back, the column from particles and things in the mobile phase, but the outlet frit is there to keep the particles in. So if the pore size is smaller than the particle size, the actual packing can come out through into the detector. If you have a spare frit, plan this the way a man goes shopping. You just go there, you do it, and you go away again. We take the column off, take the frit out. It may be, it won't come out of it. You may need to bang it on the bench. This one we know falls out, but just a tap on the bench and it may well fall out. If you have a flat-headed screwdriver, you could stick it in, tap it, and then just twist to break it free and it will come out. You could put this in an ultrasonic bar, but put it in a beaker because when the frit falls out, it may go down the drain of the ultrasonic bar. Either way, it's got to come out. If all else fails, connect this to the pump and turn the pump on. If you want to be really mean, press purge 
and it will give it 6,000 reasons to come out. Then, holding the column this way up, take the new frit and just place it on the top. It's no good putting it in here because as we put this on, it falls on the floor. And now I've dropped this on the floor just to prove the point. So it's on the top, the fitting goes on, and then we do the nut back up. Even in that short time, we will have probably put some contamination from the air into the top of the column. And so when we flush the column through, there will be peaks that will come out and it will take a little while to stabilise. But we should find straight away that the back pressure goes to normal. If you don't have a frit, but you have an old column that was fine, you could undo the outlet fitting and take the old frit out because that frit is probably okay and you could use that as the new inlet frit for the new column. It's a bit of a get you out of jail free card, but maybe it will work. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. This is Stuart Jones and I'll speak to you again.